The movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, MOSOP, has alleged the misappropriation of $800 million meant for the cleanup of Ogoni polluted environment. MOSOP urges the President Tinubu to immediately set up a panel to probe the mismanagement of the said fund, calling for the immediate dissolution of all government structures of the project. We will look at the issues surrounding this cleanup by MOSOP. Subsidy removal on premium motor spirit, PMS, or otherwise known as petrol, and the jostle towards right pricing of electricity may have triggered a major shift in the pattern of energy consumption, with about 75% of households now exploring solar as their alternative sources. Today on the show, we will look at the possibility of solar energy being a possibility in all homes in Nigeria. Of course, we will have the headlines from off the press. What are the national dailies saying today? A very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today is Tuesday and every, every day, uh, every Tuesday rather, we think about technology. And a lot of people have said the myriad of problems that we have in Nigeria can be solved by just using technology. It offers a solution for all Nigeria's problems. Whether you want to talk about importation, whether you want to talk about sensors, whether you want to talk about elections, whether you want to talk about even uh, road transportation and everything, or transportation generally, or everything in our everyday life, technology will come to the rescue if we can use it well and respect it well as well. Because when we say that people are the problems uh, of, uh, that we face in Nigeria, it means that the people need to respect the technology if we want it to work. Otherwise, it will not work. Whatever you put in, like they say in computer jargon, uh, garbage in, garbage out. The technology has the solution to all our problems, but are we ready? to adopt these technological solutions to the problems that we have. And if we adopt the technological uh, solutions to our problems, are we ready to respect the outcomes uh, that we see? Uh, today we're still grappling with whether or not we had a good election. Uh, we have the story from, uh, or the report from the EU, which has been rejected by uh, the federal government anyway. But what are, one of the things, the major things that uh, was addressed or was spoken about in that report was the fact that um, uh, some of the things that could have given us a very good election, like the technology that we uh, were supposed to have deployed, uh, we didn't really uh, show transparency in it. And so we messed up, uh, if that's the word, permit the word, uh, the election that could have been the freest and fairest. But the federal government has said, no, that is not it anyway. So they said that the report is nothing to uh, write home about. Uh, they, they don't believe in that report. Uh, well, it depends on where you stand, whether you stand on the side of the federal government that sa says the election was the best uh, election, or you stand on the side of the opposition. I'd like to call everybody else the opposition to say that the election was not as good as it should be. Because if the technology that was deployed was used to the letter and respected, and the outcomes also respected, then we wouldn't be talking about uh, what we're talking about today. So technology offers a solution to Nigeria's problems, but how much are we ready to respect those outcomes uh, that the technology will give us uh, to solve our problems? Well, today is another very wonderful day, a beautiful day uh, to get up from wherever you are and go to work. Yesterday, it was really, really terrible for the people who were going to work, especially those who were going towards the um, Victoria Island, Lekki, Aja from the mainland. It was really terrible, at least in the early hours of the morning. That was because there was a truck on the road, on the third mainland bridge actually, that carried uh, what we normally call in Nigeria as pure water. And it crashed. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how the truck fell on third mainland bridge. Was it trying to maneuver? There was no bend there. There was nothing there. I just do not know how it happened. But it did happen. And that made traffic to be a little bit um, uh, 
something else, a little bit more legacy, <laughs> if I can use that word. But today, uh, it was free, and I hope that even at this time, it is still free on the road. So wherever you're going from or you're coming from, uh, be sure that today is a little bit better than yesterday. At least at the time I was passing, uh, the roads were free enough to get to the office. Okay, so uh, we heard another very disturbing news yesterday uh, that um, a story building collapsed in Abuja. And I do not know why this keeps happening uh, in Nigeria. A story building collapsed in Abuja. Uh, in some other countries, they have air tremors, they have earthquakes, they have uh, so many other natural disasters that uh, make houses to collapse. In Nigeria, it's just no disaster. Is it because the sun is too high? No disaster at all, no natural disaster at all, and buildings collapse. And most times they say it's because of substandard materials that are used. I don't know why people who are contractors uh, contracted to build these buildings are left to work the, uh, work the earth if, if this, things like this happen. They say people are trapped, but there's a possibility that trap will lead to dead. You know, there's a possibility because people were working on site when this building collapsed. That's four-story building that was supposed to be used as a hotel. It just collapsed like that. And that was immediately after uh, the person who is in charge, the engineer in charge, just left the place. So many people are currently, as they say, uh, trapped in a four-story building that collapsed in at Life Camp Jabi on Monday in the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja. The building was said to be meant for hotel accommodation and it trapped many on-site workers. The incident occurred at about 4 p.m. while the workers were working at the site shortly after the engineer left the site when the casting work was going on. You see, and the reports say from eyewitnesses that uh, it was because of substandard materials that were used to build this hotel. And we keep hearing this all the time. I, I would like a situation where uh, once we hear this, we hear that the next thing is the contractor has been arrested and prosecuted, sent to jail if possible, because if lives are lost, it's because of carelessness or selfishness or just wickedness. Because if you know that, for instance, a bag of cement should give you from 25 to 30 blocks, max 30 blocks, do you know that in Nigeria some cement uh, uh, factories use one bag they make up to 60 bags or 60 blocks out of one bag of cement. And we're seeing this. Sometimes you talk to the people who are builders and they tell you that the pillars are what matters. If you have a strong pillar, it doesn't matter what goes uh, in between the pillars. So they can do anything and just feel that it is all right. These things should not continue. What if we had natural disasters? One day a tremor just comes and the whole buildings in Lagos, for instance, just uh, crumble because of a little shake. It, these things are not good. If we talk to ourselves as Nigerians, if we want Nigeria to be a big country, a good country, a country that we can compare to anyone in the world, we have to do a revamp of ourselves. The other day we were talking about someone who stole uh, some things from the rail lines, some clips or something they call them, and he was removing them from the rail lines. That means he didn't care if a train comes, a train derails, people die, he didn't care. And a train will carry more than 10 people, sometimes more than 100 people. He didn't care if 100 people died because he wanted to, you know, steal those things and make money out of it. There's a difference between stealing, just being a thief, and just being a daylight witch, as I would call it. Because what is that? I mean, some people steal, like, some people steal from people who they think that have more than enough. It's still wrong anyway. The other people steal from even people that do not have anything. And you say, you're just, you're just trying to make a living. We have to talk to ourselves as Nigerians. Let us try to start teaching uh, patriotism from, from the cradle. Because there was a time where people were were taught how to be patriotic to their country in little things that uh, they used to do. 
in the way they stood up to recite or to sing the national anthem, the way they surrounded the flag and respected the flag and so many other things. You grew up with that mentality that your country was a very important thing in your life and you needed to you know, live up to the billing as a good citizen of the country. I don't know if those things are still being taught in our schools. Little things that matter. People should be taught to respect humanity. People should be taught to love their country. And then every other thing, like the scripture says, will be added unto us, we hope. We also um, have a story, a trending issue, that um, NLC is to meet with the president, Tinubu, on 65-year retirement age. Now, this is funny. In France, people were protesting because the government said that they were going to add two more years to uh, the retirement age, which was supposed to be 60, I think, and the government was thinking about adding two more years to them. And they protested and said, no, they wanted 60. It shouldn't go beyond that. They wanted to retire at the time that they needed to retire. Now, you ask yourself, why would a Nigerian want to serve the government or serve the country or in whatever capacity they find themselves till 65 years? When will you retire and have time for yourself and just, just thank God that you have done your bid for the country and then you enjoy yourself? And one of the arguments that the NLC uh, brought up is that uh, some of the people uh, will not need to suffer for that long after re retirement, you know, because you know that when you retire, there's a possibility that you will not even get your pensions. You will not get your gratuity, at least on time. Some people die and leave it behind. At least I, I know that. I, I had a sister who retired more than three years ago, and she didn't have her benefits, and then she died. We buried her in May. So she just left all the benefits at the time that she was supposed to enjoy the benefits of working for the country. She was a nurse, by the way. So through COVID-19, through whatever pandemic, she was there. But she didn't get her benefits. So this fear is, well, I would say justifiable because when you're still working, there's a possibility or you will be paid your salaries every month. But when you retire, nobody knows. How is it possible to just owe people who are old, who cannot do anything, who have retired, who have served the country for 35 years, you still owe them. And what do you want them to do? Some of these people were not even having the wage that was big enough for them to save. And now they have retired. You're still owing them. You're using money. You're building, some of the governors are building flyover in places where two cars fly. It may be a day or maybe a week, you're building a flyover uh, in that place, a pedestrian bridge in that place where there's no traffic jam. I'm, I'm just using that as an example. Some projects are not even necessary, but because you want a legacy project, you're leaving a legacy project and forgetting that there's also a bad legacy that in your administration, people who should be taken care of were being owed their salaries. People who are old, some of them are up to 70, 80, they still have to go and queue on the line to do verification and all whatnot so that you can pay them their uh, monthly stipend. It's, we, like we said, technology can solve all the problems. I was at the NYSC Secretariat, for instance, just close to the office, and I saw the thousands of NYSC uh, of youth core members just lining up for one signature or one verification, one thing or the other, that can be done online. And I don't know why people, our people still keep subjecting others to this kind of torture, as I would say. If it can be done with technology, why bring people together? Especially at this time where fuel subsidy has been removed. If someone is coming from Aja, for instance, it used to be 300, 400 from Aja Underbridge. Now it's about a thousand naira. So you're coming, you're coming and going. It's two thousand naira uh, instead of six hundred naira or eight hundred naira. You, you can imagine how much is the allowance that they're being paid as core members. They have to go to the places of primary assignments as well every day or maybe five days in a week and all that. So have you factored in that? 
So why not the NYSC just says, okay, X, Y, Z things you can do online. So every month, go online, do your registration, verification and everything, and that's it. But you're bringing the children <laughs> to come here. Some of them will stand for like four, five hours just to do something that could have been done online. So let us let technology come to the rescue uh, in our daily life in Nigeria. If, unless we do that, we will still find problems in almost every facet. So the Labour Congress is set to engage President Bola Tinubu, as I said, on the agitation for extension of civil servants' retirement age to 65. 65 before you retire. And then they are also asking for 40 years in service instead of 35 years in service. So if you're young enough and you had your job and then you have served for 35 years, they don't want you to retire anymore. They want you to serve till 40 years before you can retire. But if you were uh, old enough and then you got your job uh, and even at the time of at the time when you get up to 60 years, you have not served up to 35 years. They want you to serve up to 65 years. I wouldn't want to serve up to 65 years. From 60, I should be enjoying myself and then having fun with my grandchildren. Not to be going to work early in the morning, like we wake up 4 o'clock to come to work because we are afraid of Lagos traffic and all that. We can't always be doing this. And the problem is not in the NLC. The problem is in the government that has not put a mechanism in place using technology, if possible, to make sure that nobody is being owed. And then as soon as you retire, promptly you're getting your benefits. Some people cannot even save to build a house. Some people cannot save to do anything else. So they're waiting for that retirement benefit to just get their gratuity, go and make a small two-bedroom flat for themselves to enjoy the rest of their life here on net with their wives. Some people were able to save, but a lot of people who were able to save may have cut corners. It's not everybody that can do that. Everybody tells you, have a second stream of income. Uh, but what is, where is the time for you to do that if you're a dedicated staff? So are you saying that, for instance, if I'm a broadcaster and you're telling me that, okay, we cannot pay you enough for you to save, uh, be looking for brown envelopes. How will that affect me and affect what I, I put out there? It will affect everything. So if we don't want to encourage evil, then we should do the right thing. There are some people who are not asking for too much. Just give them what they desire. And a lot of these things can be done with technology. I come from a state where uh, my governor then, Donald Duke, uh, Cross River State, brought technology into payment of salaries. And I know how much he was fought. Everybody was saying, uh, this cannot happen here. Because, you know, when you're giving salaries out uh, in those days, uh, the people who were paying you, they were keeping some change for themselves and all that. And people were making a lot of money. And he said, no, this cannot happen anymore. Everybody who's working for the state will have to be paid through the bank. And he gave everybody that opportunity to just go to the bank and collect your salary. And People didn't accept it, but at the end of the day, everybody enjoyed it. So you can start it. You can be the revolutionary uh, that can start these and do things the right way. Use technology to plug the holes, to, you know, Nigeria wants every cover to count. And if that has to be done, then technology will be employed. We were talking about uh, theft, oil theft. If you go to Saudi Arabia and every other place that there is oil, Every drop of oil can be accounted for technologically. Everywhere it goes, whatever is out of the pipelines, and everything can be done. And you cannot say Nigeria cannot do something like that. So when we're complaining about oil theft, are we really complaining that it is being stolen, or we're just making noise to make people think that we're working? Because if we want to work, if it costs a fortune to put things in place so that no drop will be lost anymore, then we know that Nigeria is on its way to becoming the richest country in the world, or one of the richest countries in the world. What does Dubai have on us? What can we not have if we want to put our minds to it? It's just technology. Well, like I said, the theme for today is technology offers a solution for all Nigeria's problems. So let us give technology a chance uh, today and in the future to make sure we have less complaints to make about our country. 
Well, we just also had a story about the girl uh, from Anambra State that Jam says uh, forged her result. If that girl is capable of doing that, we do not know. But um, uh, we saw, we've also seen her side of the story where she got a text message from Jam, where she went to uh, print out uh, something from the, the, the server uh, and the result that she was given uh, was the one she displayed. And then Jam is saying that she forced, forged her result. Uh, we do not know where that, uh, the truth lies, but according to the girl also, uh, when they scanned the QR code, when they scanned the QR code on her own result, somebody else's name appeared with a score. Then they did an investigation. That same person whose name appeared with a score had a different score. So what are we doing? Manipulation? or it's just that we do not know how to use this technology, then let us employ the best hands that can do this for us and let us never have this issue again. If the young girl is saying the truth, that means she has been scarred for life. How do you call a 13-year-old a thief when she's not a thief, when she thought that she, was, she, was, she had won a victory? She said she had always been taking first position from her nursery school days till now, and suddenly you just told her, that she's a thief. She went and forged her results. We should never allow these things to happen. Well, well, today is Tuesday, and it's a day we talk technology. But the technology is not going to be what we will focus on today. We are talking about Mossops urging Tinubu to prove alleged mismanagement of $800 million cleanup fund, and also households consider solar electricity as an alternative source of power. We'll take a short break see what the weather says, and when we return, it will be time for the newspapers. Stay with us.